once again showing how the slavery conflict has its roots in the Constitutional Convention, there is actually a, a Fugitive Slave Act written into the Constitution. What the Southerners wanted was an end to the uh, Northern compliance with the runaway slaves. People like Frederick Douglass, who are runaway slaves, had gotten into the North and uh, were flaunting their status. So as part of the Compromise of 1850, the Southerners were given this new Fugitive Slave Act, and it's a much stronger act. And Northerners really didn't like it for a few reasons. The first was that it was incredibly unfair. Um, the accused runaway slave lost all of their rights. They were assumed to be a slave. They did not get a trial. They could not call witnesses on their own behalf. They couldn't even speak in court. And the judge was paid $10 uh, if that runaway was found to be a runaway slave, and only $5 if an accused runaway slave was found to be a freeman. They were also unhappy because anybody that was in the given area during a, uh, an attempted capture uh, was automatically deputized. So they were literally being forced into participating in, in the slave system. The last thing that they, the North tried to do was pass personal liberty laws. Uh, these were state laws that were designed to get around the Fugitive Slave Act. Um, it gave accused runaway slaves a, a trial, and it provided uh, counsel or lawyers for them, uh, dependent on each state. Um, and this is where one of those arguments about the Civil War really gets lost. The personal liberty laws were state-based laws that were trying to overcome a federal regulation. This is the southern states that are trying to uh, use the federal government in order to force the northern states to comply. So there's a lot going on here with the Fugitive Slave Act, but the North is really unhappy about this because they're being forced to uh, participate in this slave system now against their will.